This project is 100% fan sponsored, so we do all projects in the interest of the fans. Please help us keep it that way by throwing something in the tip jar, becoming a channel member here on YouTube, or a Patreon member on patreon.com slash tbnation. It's it's the original one, man. We're just gonna have to go and grind and put it on, but I think before we can even flip it over, we're gonna have to redo the gunnels and then put the transom in, and then we can take this boat off. You know, also probably do the bow plate. So before we can really even take this boat off the trailer, it's gotta be stable and not all flimsy. Then I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with, with my life there. So this boat, I had to move my trailer and move the boat. This is gonna have to have a workspace. I need a bigger house. So if you're wondering how to do this, so first up, we gotta find the longest piece in here. So this piece is gonna be 3 4 inch by 1 16 inch tube. All right, we sell kits in our shop. Not too long ago, I bought extra long pieces. I wonder if these are them. If you're gonna do it, these are them. We got an extra long stick here because I think that's what we needed. Because when I put this piece in here, this initial piece, it was not a, uh, it was just short, but like a few feet, it really pissed me off. I mean, I'm hoping that one's not like that. I think that one might actually be that way too. I think it might just be screwed there. I think they came in like 30 foot sticks or some, some obscene. Uh, these are cut in half too. These aren't even like, it's cut in half. Like I couldn't transport a big stick in my truck. I did, there was no way I tried. And this is when I had a, a half ton that had a window in the back. This one doesn't even have a window in the back, stupid ass truck. Like friggin', whatever, we're just gonna, I mean, I guess we're gonna have to commit the kit. All right, so we have three fourth inch tubing, right? We have, I think this is one inch flat bar. Yeah, it's one inch flat bar. This is bevel. This is the stuff that originally came with a boat. You can tell it's especially extruded. But one inch flat bar is one inch flat bar. Don't worry if it's beveled or not. A one eighth inch flat bar will bend the contour all day. Then the tubing, and then we'll tell you about how we're gonna bracket it here so we can get it like this. Cause this right here is a very, very nice solid gun. Once we put a top panel and we get the transom, we get the angle brackets in the back, it'll be, it'll be legit, be ready to go. We got three clamps up there. Try and hold the bevel. We really can't attach anything with rivets until we get farther on. I'm gonna try and bend this in. You need lots of clamps. So we just have it laid out. Now that was actually pretty easy. That was actually very easy. I just wanna let you know. We have a million clamps that I've collected over time through my series of projects and that helped. I mean, there's like a lot. So maybe a trip to Harbor Freight, getting, uh, you know, 10 or so of those clamps for about as cheap as you can get them. will work just fine. That black one over there is a Harbor Freight clamp. Can you tell it's all busted? Still hanging on to life, but still working. And then some of these other ones are ones I just I, I did on a, on a recent tool haul, pre-Black Friday tool haul. Those red ones, those red ones are the nicest ones. They're they're like adjustable screw-on clamps, which are the perfect breed because these adjustable clamps are nice for what we did. But as far as like true tension on, you need screw-on clamps. So if you have a combination of adjustable and screw-on clamps, or if you have adjustable screw-on hybrid clamps, really those are the best, man. I don't even know what those are called but they're awesome. So the gunnel naturally formed. That's how the boat naturally is. It just formed that way. So we will be putting in from front to back the rivets. And we're just gonna be using standard like, you know, half inch hand hit rivets. We are not gonna be countersinking them. The reason we're not gonna be countersinking them because as somebody who's a true advocate of micro framing, small framing, you know, it's the best to use pan head rivets everywhere you can use them. 
because they're the strongest. Now, countersink is really good for thicker aluminum that can take it, but for thin aluminum, there is a, you're taking a risk on stuff that's gonna structurally shake and move all the time, where you know it's a really nice joint and you don't want your gunnels ever popping out. So pan head rivets it is all the way down. We'll be doing that here, making it work. All right, so it's looking all right. And plane. right now we're gonna be inching it up, taking all the other rest of these clamps off because they're gonna make us end up not going straight. No, no true line of a boat is ever really straight. Everybody's, so for all the people out there who are OCD, I feel bad for you. I mean, it's a disorder for a reason. Look at the line, follow the line, push it through. And just as you inch it up and inch it up, between every rivet point. Between every rivet point, you want a nice, high quality clamp. Tensioning down those. These adjustable clamps after a minute are just, they're just there to get you placeholders, but you really want to inch it down with your, with your screw clamps, or in this case, your adjustable screw clamps. The adjustable clamps on themselves are not going to be able to do it. They're going to slip, they're going to move. They're not going to be able to get the, like, the absolute tension where you'll start getting some bowing. So we've skipped all bowing and, well, there's only one spot where it's questionable that we can sand down here where, the actual gunnel bead is past the new gunnel tracks. So it's, we'll have to sand that down. We'll have to polish it up and kind of make it whatever we have to do it. There's a little bit of that over there too, although we got that, I think for the most part, straight. Um, you want to keep it as straight as possible. But yeah, naturally just bows with the whole thing. this work? I have no idea. There's an 090 sleeve that's actually It works. Oh my. Okay, it's in. functionality there's not a whole lot of bend or give in that even though there's a little play there I could have a little bit more to seam that up and hammer that in I tried to knock it in as close as I could the only regret I do have is that I should have switched the shims vertically instead of horizontally that would have tightened up this to where this gap wasn't there I'll have to do something about that also but you know these, these are things that we can get around we can if we have the aluminum braze gaps in there we'll do that too that's probably gonna be what we have to do just to feel like, I don't know what else is gonna fill that gap and stay other than brazing. Okay, FYI, I asked for something to make the top cast because remember this was like a wooden gunnel all the way around, a wooden, a really thick, like a eight inch wooden gunnel. It was kind of cool and retro and everything. Obviously not very, very functional for what we're gonna be doing here. So I have some, send me some angle pieces and some, uh, I guess some fairly thick, robust top sheets to make the angle brackets. And so he did send that. What we didn't account for, obviously the new design is that this will bevel up. That's gonna screw up everything. So this isn't exactly low bearing yet, but if I think if we cut in here, we cut in a little piece out, which will, that'll suck in of itself to do that. But if we cut a little piece of that out, um, 
That way we can like dent this down and fold it in to where it's flush with this because we need like a flush. And this will be a permanent, not ever to be removed again, you know, end cap, which is fine. We don't need it to be removed. It's just, we just need it to work. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this content please help it trend subscribe leave a like a comment check me out on all my other social media platforms it helps me trend more than you'll ever know it's tv nation you want the specs of this stuff this is a 1 16th inch square aluminum tubing uh 0.067 if you need that measurement and uh, we chose this because it was seemed to be the Goldilocks zone. One inch is too thick. I mean, it's harder to bend, especially hard to bend at one inch. <laughs> uh, half inch would have been way easier to bend, but we weren't sure if it was gonna be strong enough. And this is actually very strong, even without the angle supports or the bow support. But once we get the, the bow and each of these angles, uh, you know, secured to this transom, which we're gonna fix, but we'll get to the transom here in a second. When we fix this, this will be very strong. I think this came in a 21 foot stick. I could not transport it. I think that was the problem. It had to be cut in half because they're right at about 11 feet long, I think. And it's just short about, this is about 13 and a half foot boat. Or it's just short, just over two feet, which we had at this break in here. I put this off for a while because I wasn't sure how I was going to do this, but the, uh, the, the tubing plus the shims, that's how we form our hatches. And I wasn't sure how it would work here, but it would work with one more shim it probably would actually keep it from tweaking. So we can maybe even re-drill these out because again, they're panhead rivets. There's not a whole lot of risk to re-drilling them out and re-putting in a new shim to get us more flat. And I think that would actually hold. I mean, it's just as strong in there. Um, we could also tack braze or just weld this. We are gonna have to weld. We're gonna have to do that. We're gonna talk about why, but just in certain spots. And that's just to ensure structural integrity because normally you don't have to go through things like this. Um, we could try and fabricate a kit around this where it sends this. I think the bigger problem with, uh, if we can ever fabricate a kit that is economical and is able to let you do these things, then we'll try, but it's pretty hard to fabricate a kit that will do what this does. So you have to segment the gunnel in segments. Very, I'm a little cringed about just having segmented it all. We are gonna be able to do it and pull it off. And we have people that are pretty talented welders down here that I know who will help us pull this off. All right, so we screwed this up pretty good. Uh, so if you're gonna comment in the section about how we screwed this up, go ahead. Just so you know, I already know. I mean, I just showed you it in real time, screwing this up. First fail was we mismeasured it. So it was supposed to come up here and it didn't. So we were gonna actually add some sort of thing to top it off. We might actually end up just cutting this all off Probably what we'll do is we'll end up, because this amount that we're cutting off is the exact amount that we're gonna need to kind of fill this in. Lowering this transom to make this fit on top, I think is gonna mess it up even more. But when we cut it off up there, we kind of lose our structural integrity. He did give me a top cap, do some welding. We're gonna have to do some welding somewhere. I have some friends who are very talented at welding and probably contact them. Cause I don't think a budget, you know, a boat that's gonna go to somebody else um, should be uh, blessed with my first time welding experience. We'll do welding though, but I made this, I did bend this top cap out, out of 063. I've never had to deal with a boat that had no top caps. I mean, to modify a wooden transom like this or even to slant it like that is not even a problem. And you guys know that. Just take a, a planer or a sander to it and just angle it. And then that's it before you resin it. But this one's causing us some problems. This bracket thing over here, I cut this way out. It pushes in a little more, but it's still a huge mismeasurement fail. So we'll be having to use this for something else. Um, might even be another rack of material that's even better to use. Um, but we did make this to kind of fit there when we were planning it. So we weld the seams, maybe bend that in a little bit more. 
it's already creased, so we just bending it in is not a big deal. And uh, I don't know, we just got a cheap, cheap Harbor Freight brake. They make a $50 one and I think a $250 one. I think the $250 one is a substantially better. I just don't have any room for it. Like I got tools for days and boats for days. <laughs> Stuff that, you know, I, I have problems, I have storage problems. Again, I need a bigger house, but it's not here or there yet. But um, we're gonna go along the lines of this. But while we're waiting to figure out this, and as you guys are gonna give me your feedback and advice on how to fix this, which I appreciate, I actually think this is the top cap. Sure as crap, that, that does fit it. Look at that, that fits it. Yeah, but then that tube is right there and we pretty much cut the whole, well, if we cut the whole tube just to the top, then we really actually don't lose any actual structural integrity if we cut it flush there. Just cause it, well, not flush, but like just leave a little bit of it on. That would make a little bit more sense than what we did do. That would make a lot more sense. I wonder if we can just do that. Cause then this caps on, this will cap onto that. Like that, we can notch and bend. Well, we still can't get away with welding. We have more options though. This is a slightly more complicated. These are drop in. These generally do drop in and do well with most standard boats. This is just not a standard boat. This boat is so old and has so much retro crap going. You know, find me a boat today that tapers and does this and does this little womp thing. We do have plans to, to overcome this and, and make sure we overcome this, which will be coming up. Next video in series is the subfloor. And we get at least one question a day on how to subfloor out a boat that contours like this. What's the best way to do it? How you would do it? If you had a drain port, blah, blah, blah. I'm so glad I'm gonna take our sweet time making a masterclass on how to do the subfloor and talk to you about how we're gonna do that. Then we're going to frame it out. And then by the time we're framing, we're going to install bow plate. We do have a bow plate kit we'll be installing and donating to this boat. While we're doing this boat, we're gonna talk about cheaper ways to budget everything. Like if you couldn't do it exactly this way, we're gonna go from low to high. We have a list of videos in our in our archive, pretty much for anything you could ever do. Cause we all started out on budget builds and less skilled stuff all the way to higher end stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll be layering those videos in each playlist. I'm sorry, in each video, we'll be putting them in the description area below and also linking them to um, just the iCard links. You can just click up here or up here. They're, it appears a little I, little I link, just click it and that'll bring you to what we're talking about. So we'll give everybody a a um, more doable process. So also know that this is our haul. We are self-funding this entire project. And by I mean we, I do mean we. So any money that I get from YouTube or from crowdfunding, that's how we get around having to do somebody else's boat and having to be like pressed for time while still be given the, the least amount of capital available to actually do the boat where we run into all kinds of problems. So that's why we chose to just do these boats ourselves. And that's why the John Yak came out so well. And that's why this boat, when it's done, will come out exceptionally well because it's crowdfunded. It's funded by the people, funded by us. So anytime you, you shop on our store or you become a channel member or you join Patreon, that's what actually funds these bills and allows us to not have to go reach out to sponsors who will then, you know, they help us out and they make us be able to do a stuff, but then, then we have to do what they say. And that really does affect the direction of anybody's channel who has to be subjugated by sponsors over time. You know, you know how that is. And we've, we've, we've heard about it on the channel. So I definitely don't want to go that route. So we'll just take our sweet time doing it this way. So we do appreciate any and all help. So like I said, you know, throw something in the chip jar. So let's, so we can build this thing right and fairly efficiently on time. So when we get this thing away, it's not before the season's end. All right, stay tuned.